Hello everyone, this is Icons here, and today we're going to talk about 10 things most people probably don't know about the pencil lead. The pencil lead, commonly used either to write or draw, is composed of four components, a solid pigment core, a core casing, and most of the time a ferrule, which connects this core casing to a rubber. This pigment core leaves a trail of solid material adhered, most of the time, to a sheet of paper by means of physical abrasion. Its casing has two very important functions, preventing the core from breaking or marking its user's hand. Fun fact, pencil leads actually have no lead in them whatsoever. Their name comes from their associated function with the styluses used by the ancient Roman Empire scribes. These styluses had pretty much the same purpose back then as the pencil lead has today. Being made out of a thin metal rod, they intended to leave a light yet readable impression on a piece of papyrus. In today's day and age, pencil cores are made out of a non-toxic mixture of graphite and clay. Graphite started to be widely used when a large deposit was found in England in 1564. The fact that graphite allowed its holder to leave a dark mark on almost every surface made its popularity increase rapidly. However, its soft and brittle nature required it to be initially wrapped with string and later on inserted into hollowed out wooden sticks. And that's how the pencil lead was born. In 1662, Nuremberg saw the first ever mass produced pencil. This event was the first stepping stone into establishing a new and rapidly growing industry in the 19th century with the appearance of companies like Faber Castle and many others. We're halfway through our list, but let me take this chance to ask you. If you're enjoying today's video, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to turn that notification bell on and let us know in the comment section down below what you would like to see featured in future videos. Now, let's get back to it. In 1795, Nicolas Jas Conté patented the process still used today for producing graphite pencil cores. Conté's patent involves mixing powdered graphite with clay and water until the mixture allows for the formation of sticks, which are then hardened in an oven. This process not only made the use of graphite more efficient, but it also allowed it for the reduction of production costs. Moreover, by adjusting the ratio between clay and graphite powder, one could control the lightness and darkness that the graphite mark leaves on the paper, which proved to be an industry game changer. Pencil manufacturers started grading their pencil score hardness using numbers and letters. The hardest available is the 9H, while the softest is 9B. Most commonly eraser tipped pencils tend to be around the 2H and 4B range, while the general number 2 pencil equates to an H and B one. As strange as it may sound, this is not a standardized graphite scaling system. Therefore, the hardness, smoothness and overall quality of a pencil differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. It took roughly 50 years, in 1812, for William Monroe to manufacture the first wood pencil lead in America. Until this point, Americans relied purely on pencils produced overseas. However, the war with England forced American ingenuity to be put to work. And so it did, with the appearance of the Joseph Dixon Crucible Company towards the end of the 19th century. It all started with raw, natural and unpainted pencils, showing off high quality wood casings. But today's most commonly used pencil lead is painted yellow. This color has a far deeper purpose than the one to just help you find a pencil on a clutter desk. In fact, it was used by American pencil makers to symbolize the royal and respectful Chinese origins of their pencil cores. Generally, pencils tend to be made in four different shapes, hexagonal, round, triangular and flat shaped. Hexagonal pencils are great to be used every day. Round and triangular shaped ones are often used by children, providing them an easy grip. And finally, there's the flat shaped ones, which are often called carpenter pencils and can be laid flat, thereby not allowing them to roll while woodworking. From its composition to its various shape, going through their name and color, these were 10 facts about a pencil head that you were probably not aware of. And that's it for today's video, everyone. If you've enjoyed it, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to turn that notification bell on and let us know in the comments section down below which products you would like to see featured in future videos. Thank you.
and we'll see you on the next one.